Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick overview of all of these things here. These are the new receivers from Radio Master. Now, Radio Master is one of those vendors that I'm very comfortable with. Uh, this is my kind of primary radio now, a cracking radio that works exceptionally well. And I was welcome interested. Thank you. I was interested when uh, I saw that Radio Master has started making receivers. Now, not a massive surprise, I suppose, because Jumper did something earlier on in the year. But they have come out with a range of receivers that support both D8 and D16. So if you've seen this stuff and kind of had all the same questions I'm sure that I had in my head, hopefully I'm going to answer them for all of you in this video. Thank you to Ben at Radio Master as well for kind of answering all my daft questions as I was figuring this stuff out for the video too. So the first thing to talk about these is the fact that they have brought out not only the D16 receivers, uh, things like the R168 that I have here, or the little baby uh, tiny, don't worry, I'm going to show you these much closer up in a minute, the R161. Uh, they've also brought out five, surprisingly, D8 versions of the receivers. And I don't fly D8, it's not something that's uh, legal here in Europe, but apparently in lots of other places in the world, DA is still a beloved protocol that lots and lots of pilots use. And because of uh, the lack of new receivers coming out for D8, uh, just checking with Ben, because I was kind of surprised that I thought there'd be a couple of D8s and loads of D16s, uh, saying, why have you done it that way? He said, well, it was just, we saw a gap in the market, and it appears that that's been the case, because they've been selling exceptionally well. So for all of you D8 pilots that be been looking for receivers, looks like they've got you covered. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that the... AWCST D16 compatible receivers are not just FCC and LBT um, versions, so you can run them here in Europe legally and also internationally, and you can kind of pick the firmware that you want and flash it on there. They also, believe it or not, will support version 1 and version 2 of AWCST radio as well. So no matter what you've got on your radio, you can flash the D16 versions with a version of the firmware that's going to work. And that is very good news. To flash the receivers is the same process as you would do it with any kind of free sky receiver using the radio. So again, there's nothing really new to learn there. It's the same process we've all been using for donkey's years. So let me talk about the D8 versions first. There's a few more of these. First one to talk about is this little R81 Nano receiver. This again is D8 protocol and it has an S bus out. So this is the kind of, I guess it's an XM replacement. If you wanted to kind of compare it to the Free Sky stuff, uh, perfect for little models, uh, whoops and those kind of things where space is at a premium. Nice to see they've included the cable inside here as well. Next version to talk about then is the R84. This provides four channel PWM. So this is like the uh, cool little versions that I've used a lot for little basic uh, park flyers and wings. Next one I'll talk about then is the R86, slightly bigger brother. This one has six PWM channels out. Uh, none of the ones I've uh, covered so far, apart from the first one, have SBUS. Um, they all have PWM. Next one, then, is another variant of the R86, the R86C. Uh, quite a bit physically bigger, uh, but this one also has either six or eight channels out, and those other two channels can be used for SBUS and also RSSI, but I'll talk about that in a moment. And then the biggest one of these D8 receivers is this thing here. This is the R88, and this is a full 8-channel PWM receiver. All of these receivers run from 4.8 to 8.4 volts, although to be fair, I would always plug them into a 5-volt supply. But if you have 6 volts or 7 volts in your model, you could run them on that as well. Next two versions are the D16 stuff, which is the stuff that personally I'm going to be ordering quite a few of to make sure that I have enough for the builds in the coming months. First one is the R161. Uh, this is a 16 channel S bus out, also has the S port connections on here as well. Nice small package in a hard case. I do like the fact that the cable comes with it, has the connector for your S bus, 
and also the pins for the smart port stuff too. The other version in the D16 lineup is the R168. This is an 8th channel output. It will also do S bus out and smart port 2. So I'm guessing this is kind of the equivalent of an X8R, I guess, in this particular setup. Again, these two receivers ship with version 1 of AWCST, but you can download and flash it with either LBT, FCC, version 1 or version 2 of whichever flavor you're interested in. Working voltages for these two things are a little bit less. These are four and a half to six volts working voltages. So you're gonna run them off a five volt line on your flight controller. And because of the S bus outputs and also the smart port bits and pieces on here as well, these are gonna be great, particularly things like the R161. is gonna be smashing for those little models with Betaflight or iNav in, maybe using a little flight controller, like a lot of the builds I've been doing recently. The R161 would be a really cute little way to pop that into the side. With the hard case, it's easy to put a bit of double-sided foam tape on the back, stick it on the side of the bay, and then use the flying lead to connect into the S-Bus pins, and then the other two pins for the smart port stuff as well. Last thing to talk about then, is there any particular tips and tricks? Well, no, not really. Um, once you've got the right firmware on the D16 ones, then it's gonna connect to your radio and work exactly like any other AWCST version one, version two, LPT, FCC compatible receiver. <gasps> there are probably only a couple of things that I'll mention on this. Uh, I did talk about the fact when I did my video on multi-protocol module tips and tricks, there is the option to tune uh, the protocol that you're using for the receiver that you're using. And that's not specific to these Radio Master receivers. It's just good practice every time you do it. Do make sure that you're doing that. Uh, the process is you power and bind the receiver. You put the receiver, I would kind of like 10, 15, 20 feet away, and then use the tune function on the radio to get the best RSSI. Once you've got that, then that's the best setting for the radio on that model for that receiver. Now, flying them here and with a little bit of testing that I've done, I've gone to the edge of legal range and getting the same kind of RSSI numbers that I would expect to get with other AWCST version 1 receivers. Uh, do be aware that the position of the antenna, the local RF noise, your antenna alignment on your radio, all those things will affect how far you can fly. It looks like on the website, uh, Radio Master are being a little bit conservative and saying it's, it's over a kilometre. Um, I think it's the same as the others from what I can see. I did speak to a pilot that had flown 3.7 kilometers away. Uh, they'd gone out about 150 feet and managed about 3.7 K before uh, the link fell safed. So if you're looking for usual kind of flying experiences, uh, these look like they do the job and I'm pretty comfortable after the plane that I've done here. This R161 is gonna be the one that's gonna go in my iNav wings from here on in. So hopefully that's interesting. It kind of explains what they are, how it works. Uh, Radio Master looked like they put a bit of time and effort and thought into this. Again, I hope that they bring out some more different versions of particularly the D16 one. Looks like the D8 pilots out there, you're absolutely covered right the way from a single little S bus output all the way up to a full um, PWM 8 outputs receiver. Uh, it would be nice to have a couple more choices in the D16 lineup, but uh, let's see what 2021 brings. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.